friends, Jerry Rosa here on the Rosa String Works Metal Shop on the dark side once again. The Ford 4000 tractor. You've seen it in a few videos before. Since I was a kid, we've owned this tractor. I was, I think, 10 years old when we got it. My dad, of course, bought it. It was slightly used. It was a 1964 model that he bought in 65. We've owned it most of this tractor's life. <laughs> And I started driving it when I was 10 years old. One of the cool things about this tractor is the highway speed. It's got four ranges, a low range, high, a mid range, standard range is what we call it, and then a high range. So in low and standard, you can do a lot of farm work. In that high range, it's mostly for traveling. And when you get up into the high range fourth gear, this thing will go probably close to, you know, about 30 miles an hour down the road. Now that's pretty fast for a tractor. <laughs> I mean, it, it hauls. And some of my fondest memories are when I was only 10 years old and you know, maybe 12 years old in that range, I would drive this thing to Central Hardware. We lived in Baldwin, Missouri. <laughs> and Central Hardware was just a couple of miles away from where we lived. And I would actually drive this to the hardware store. <laughs> I've been doing this kind of work and this kind of thing and building and repairing and fixing things since I was just a small kid. Used to work on lawnmower engines and you know things like that. My dad had a landscaping business and I've talked about all those different things over the years but this tractor was my car back when I was just a kid and it was legal to drive it on the road you know and I would drive it to go cut weeds too. My dad having the landscaping business would hire out to cut a bunch of uh, lots that were grown over with weeds and I was the guy that did that. So I went and cut those weeded lots and I would have to drive it eight or ten miles sometimes on the road to get to the place to cut the weeds. So I was used to driving it on the road. But uh, anyway, it's, it, it's just funny because you don't see that kind of thing these days anymore. There's really two problems this tractor has had since day one. One of them is the power steering. You've seen me work on that before. I would say I've fixed 85% of that. You know, it's still not exactly right. I'm just sure it's not. I've done everything to this on the power steering. Trust me, there's nothing you can suggest that I haven't done. That's the truth but it has just always fought us. I put a new pump on it, I put cylinders on it, I've done everything, hoses, you name it, I've done it. Seals, everything. Okay, so anyway, the power steering is not what we're here for today. Today's the second problem that we've always had with this tractor, and that is the points. And from a very young age, I learned how to adjust points. So trust me, it's not like I don't know anything about points. You know, I've probably adjusted the points on this tractor, ah, you know, a hundred times at least in my lifetime. I'm going to uh, adjust them hopefully for the final time today by putting in an electronic ignition. I'm tired of dealing with it. Presently, it's running rough, and I would say it's only running on three cylinders. And I'd even say there's a possibility it's only running on two cylinders. Now, I didn't pull the plug wires to figure that out yet or anything, and I'm not even worried about it. But I did pull all the plugs just to make sure that there was nothing going on in the cylinders themselves. And all the plugs look clean, look good. The engine's amazing, really, for as old as it is. It's really never had any work done on the engine. Knock on wood, I shouldn't say that on camera. But anyway, we are going to try to switch out the points today for an electronic ignition. So here we go. First thing we got to do is cut the cap off of here. I converted this tractor. My dad always had it as 6 volt and positive ground. Wow, that was a pain in the neck. The battery was always dead. We were always jump starting and everything. Well, as soon as I inherited it, the first thing I did was convert it to 12 volt and negative ground. So that's what these electronic ignition is for, is for a 12 volt negative ground four cylinder. So here we go, let's see if we can make it work. Have to pull off one of these wires to give me enough clearance here. And move that out of my way. This isn't gonna be the best shot for you. Let's see if we can zoom it in though, where maybe you can at least see the part that I'm working on. If I don't get in your way too much, I don't have any room here or I'd move things around. So we'll take off the uh, rotor. It's a really kind of a funky looking rotor if you've 
familiar with rotors, it, it's kind of low and stubby looking. A little different than most, I think. And then there's a, I guess you'd call it a dust cover. This one, I don't think has a, yeah, it does have a clip too. I didn't think it had a clip, but apparently it does. It's been a while since I've been in on the points on this, to be honest. I haven't had much trouble with the points since I converted it to 12 volt, but I'm pretty sure the points are bad now. Uh, although I haven't inspected them yet, so this is my first inspection. And there's the little dust cover. There was a little clip, retaining clip thing on the top there that also makes the uh, rotor fit tighter. So that's an important piece. I don't want to lose that. Okay, so the points are exposed. Just by looking at it here, I would say that the points don't look horrible. I mean, like they're not burnt in two, but they're burnt. I can tell they're burnt. I'm just going to go for it. I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to switch it out to electronic ignition and see if it works. So what we have to do is remove the points in the condenser. I've done this on a 57 duck truck already, so I kind of already am familiar with the process. It's not really too difficult. It's pretty simple, really. My biggest problem is just operating the screwdriver with my sore hands. It's really difficult to just turn the screws. It's kind of sad, because it shouldn't be that hard. Well, one screw already fell down in there, but you know. Okay. There's a little bolt here on the outside, and we're going to take this off, and then that'll leave a hole exposed where we can put our wires through. So we're going to take all of that off, too. I'm going to go ahead and just take all of this off, this condenser, the points, and this thing here, and just remove that. And then I'll come back and show you what the next step is to install the actual electronic ignition. Pretty straightforward. Well, I lied. I brought you back to show you the removal of this because I moved the camera in a better place. I think it's better for you and better for me. And I've got a wrench here that I'm hoping will fit this. And so I'll take this off. I also just stuck a battery powered light here, a magnetic light there. Actually, I think one of my viewers sent to me. For some reason, that wire doesn't want to come off the terminal. It's too tight on the terminal for some reason. And I've lost my screwdriver and boot, so... Oh my goodness. It only happens on camera. There it is, I got it off. And take off this next nut. And hopefully, we'll be able to get this all off of here. Well, I'm not sure what the deal is here. This doesn't seem to be loosening up like it should but I think it's just old and I think it's this little rubber piece okay there it is it was just stuck got that out of there now I'm gonna save all these parts in case this electronic ignition thing doesn't work out you know gotta get the coil out yet this screw is really tight for some reason Oh, I can barely turn it. Sorry, this light just fell down to the ground, too. It's simple, but it's complicated. Like I always say. This is actually very easy. It's just the arthritis in my hands. I can barely turn the screwdriver. I have to use both hands. Because it's not even that tight. Okay, so I've got the coil loose, the points loose. Now I could take this loose from the points here too, but I don't think I have to. No, I don't have to. I've got the points in the condenser removed and I double checked to make sure that the lobes on this are going to line up with the lobes on this magnet. This is what came with the new unit. Basically this just sits down on here and lines up like that and it doesn't spin once you get it on there because of the square sides like. I'm going to go ahead and clean this all out just because I want to. Uh, the OCD's kicking in. It probably doesn't need to be cleaned out, but I'm gonna clean that up and I'll 
Show you what it looks like when we get back to it. Ordinarily, I would take carb cleaner or brake cleaner and clean this. I don't have any of that today, but I do have some ether. And as long as it doesn't put me to sleep, I can use that to clean it with. And it knocks off most of it. It probably doesn't need much anyway. All right, well, I'll set that back on there. At least it's not greasy feeling now. And then this sits on here, and they say you're supposed to know whether it goes clockwise or counterclockwise, and most of these Fords go clockwise, I'm pretty sure, so I don't think that's an issue. I'm gonna set it up for clockwise. It's got C and CC, so counterclockwise and clockwise on this thing. Not that I even know how that makes a difference. I'm going to find the holes that line up with the C, and there they are. So, there you go. Now I'll find the screws that came out of there. And yes, I did dig out the screw that fell down in there. For those of you who are wondering, one of the screws fell down in there and I dug it out. So that's one of these screws I'm putting back in. Actually, it did come with new screws now that I look at it. And I may need them because these are gonna be short. So we'll go to the package and pull out the longer screws. And there's also some ends for the wires in this package. But right now, all I need is the screws. Like I say, simple but complicated. Not, nothing to this, really. This is really a very straightforward, very easy conversion. If you've ever had problems with points and you wanna switch it out, just, you know, search on Pertronix is the uh, company that I seems to make the best ones. I truly don't know that much about it, but Pertronix seems to be the leader in the field. So you might check it with that. They don't know I mentioned them, so this is just trying to be complicated. It's really not complicated, but it's trying to be. Okay, we'll tighten that down. Again, I use the ones that are clockwise. That's the screws I used. If for some reason it doesn't seem to work, well, we'll try the counterclockwise, but I'm pretty sure it's clockwise anyway. Now this little deal here just goes right through that hole of where we removed those parts before. So all we gotta do is feed it through there and you know, I'm sure this is easy to do. Nothing to it. Yep, went right through. I say those things to jinx myself on camera, of course. Like this might be a little bit of fun getting that in there, but I think it'll go. Almost seems like that's backwards to me. Seems like that should come in from the outside, but it can't do that the way they've got it on here. It's like it's catching on the hole. It's not wanting to go through the hole. There it Maybe I got it. Yeah, I got it finally. All right, so I'm gonna pull some wires back through. It's just enough to get it in there. And then I'll pull this rubber grommet down tight. Okay, that should be fine. There's nothing there to move these wires on the inside. That's really all there is on the inside. You just lay on the magnet, tighten down the plate, choosing the proper holes. These two wires will go back to the coil, and in my case, resistor, I believe. I think I've got a resistor on this. Got to remember where I put it, though. I don't see it right off hand. Now we've got to put back the dust cap and the little clip and the rotor. There's notches on this to line up, and I just want to get it lined up right. I'm not sure offhand how it goes. Align with oiler. It says align this with the oiler. So now all I gotta do is know where the oiler is. Well, there it is right there. It, it locks in right there. And I don't think it matters on this electronic ignition where the oiler is. And this little clip goes back on here. The, the little clip is there to make the rotor tighter. And now the rotor's on there just like it should be. 
one plug wire came loose from the distributor cap, so I'll put that back in, and the other plug wire I took off of spark plug. Now we should be able to put this back in place. Again, there's little locks on this to lock it in place, so you want to make sure you get all that back where it should go. I would say I don't have something right because it's not locking in. So I must have this cover wrong, or it must have moved. Pretty sure there's a lock on that somewhere. I know it goes like that somewhere, but it's not locking in, so I'm pretty sure it's supposed to. We'll turn it around one. There, it locked it again that way. I think this might make the difference. Not yet. It's still not working the way I want it. Wait a minute, maybe there it is. Nope, that's not it yet. It, there it is. Yeah, there it is. And it's locked in, just like it should be. You don't want to get in any big hurry putting these things back together because it will come back to bite you in the rear end if you do. Yeah, once it's locked in there properly, you can tell it. Now these wires go back to the coil. That's the simple way of doing it, but I'm pretty sure I have a resistor here. Although maybe I don't because I do have a 12 volt coil on here, so probably I don't. Let me investigate, because I've converted so many tractors, I can't remember if I put a resistor on this one or not, so I'm gonna look around and make sure I'm not overlooking a resistor. When you convert six to 12, you often need to put a resistor in there to cut down the voltage, unless you convert everything else. And I've converted this to 12, I can see it right here, it says that. I think that's all I had to convert. Oftentimes people put a resistor between the coil and here. I didn't have one on here and I've been running it that way for years and haven't had a problem, so I'm gonna assume I don't need it. I'm just gonna go ahead and hook it up the way it is. So after checking to make sure there was no resistor, I have run these wires back through here behind the distributor to kind of keep them out of the open here. And I've cut them off to length and I've stripped off the ends. And now I'm going to put the uh, little eyelets on here to wire them to the top of the coil. So I've got the eyelet here. I've already stripped the wire off. And one thing about arthritis is that you drop everything all the time. Okay, so I've got that run in there and I've got my little crimper on this and I will crimp that little sucker tight. And that should do it. This is the black wire and it should go to the negative side and I'm pretty sure this is the negative side but I'm double checking here just to make sure I'm not brain dead. Yep, that is the negative side, it should be. Putting the washer on and the nut on. And we'll tighten up the nut a little bit. You don't go Hercules on these things. And the, the other wire here, the red wire now needs its eyelet, so I'll put that on there. Poke it through to where you can see the end of the wire. And crimp that little sucker down. I crimp them pretty good. And we'll run that one onto here, onto the positive side. You know, assuming that it starts, this couldn't be more simple. It's just as simple as operation as you can do on a tractor like this. I guarantee you this is easier than uh, cleaning and setting the points. So to do this one time, and hopefully never have to deal with it again. Though, I'm a little bit skeptical on that, to be perfectly honest with you. So, there you go. We're basically completely done. So, just a quick recap. You just remove the old points and condenser, and you remove this plug out of the side. You lay that new magnet right on the rotor in there and you put down the two screws on that little plate and you check for clockwise, counterclockwise. I'm assuming clockwise. 
That is an assumption on my part, but I'm pretty sure that's right. And, you know, then you just wire the positive side of the wire, the red wire, to the positive side of the coil, the negative side to the, the black wire to the negative side. And that's all there is to it. It's just that simple. Really nothing to it. Probably one of the easiest conversions like of this type that you can do. Let's see if it starts. Well, my friends, I repositioned the camera, cleaned up my trash and stuff, hopefully for the big event. Trust me, I did not try it off camera, you know, so this is my first attempt at starting it. I have no idea whether it's going to start or not. Uh, we'll see. Well, that's a good sound. Sort of. It's trying to start. pretty good. My best guess is timing is not right, so I'm going to have to look up how to set the timing. I think I know how to do it. I think it's something back on the flywheel on the back of the motor, but I'll have to double check that. Off camera, I adjusted the timing on this. And the truth is, I can see the marks on the flywheel but I couldn't really tell that much about it, you know, whether I was right or not, to be perfectly honest, so I kind of just adjusted it by sound. Now, in case you don't know how that works, if you have a timing light, and this light flashes in time with the first cylinder, you clamp this around this first cylinder spark plug wire, put the red on the positive and the black on the negative, to your battery I'm talking about. So that's all there really is to it. You just hook this on your first spark plug wire. Then this light flashes in time with that first cylinder and then there's marks on the flywheel that you're supposed to have it about eight degrees off of the top dead center. But one time I could see a five degree mark and then I really couldn't even see that anymore. I, I more or less just adjusted it by sound I don't know that it's right, but let's start it up again and see if it works any better. I really don't know. I'm a little confused about that. I may have to visit that some more. right I can tell because when I'm giving it gas taking off gas it's kind of missing and not really running steady so something's not right yet I'm gonna to have to do some more studying on the timing and try to figure that out a little better I tried cleaning the flywheel but nothing I did really seemed to make any difference okay you're probably not gonna be able to see much here yet um, this little hole right here is what you want to look for if you can see it I'm going to turn this light off and start the tractor and have the timing light flashing and then you watch in this hole and you hopefully can see something. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. But you're watching this hole right here is what you're watching.
Okay, I don't know what you could see, what you couldn't, what you could hear, what you couldn't. But when I first looked through the hole, the 15 degrees was dead center in the hole. So I loosened up the screws here on the distributor, moved the distributor, rotated it basically is what you're doing. And then eight degrees got in the center. So that time I could actually see it. So I believe I have it set correctly now and I've tightened the distributor back down. At least it's set according to what you know most folks set these tractors to. So let's see if that makes any difference. I'm going to go ahead and cover up the timing hole here and close this all back up because I don't think I'm going to adjust it anymore. I'm going to assume that that part's right and I'm just trying to get a wrench on this bolt here to close up the little timing hole. Alright, so let's start her up again and see what happens. Okay, I've cleaned up my mess. Let's start it up again and see if it's any better. I don't know, you know, it seems like it's okay. I'm going to try driving it and see what it feels like. Well, my friend, the tractor seems to be running pretty well. There may be some other problem. Maybe there's a bad wire. Maybe there's a bad plug. Something like that. But it seems to be running just about right. You know, I feel like there's a little bit of power missing. It is what it is. I've already gone on to other projects. So we're going to conclude the video here. I hope you enjoyed seeing how we put an electronic ignition in an old Ford tractor. Thanks for watching.